For the last few years, Spark has become one of the most widely used technologies in big data industry. Today's cutting-edge companies like Facebook, Netflix, Uber, and many more have deployed Spark in massive scale. It processes the data in petabytes. Hi friends, I welcome you to this today's session on Apache Spark, one of the most demanding and processing framework in big data world. Consisting on everything you need to know to get started from scratch level. So before we get into details, let's look into agenda first for better understanding. So in today's agenda, we'll be discussing about introduction of Apache Spark, Hadoop versus Spark, features of Spark, Spark components, then Spark architecture, and then Spark application, and in last, performance optimization technique in Spark. Now coming to the introduction of Spark. Apache Spark is a first and general purpose cluster computing system. It is an open source data processing engine to store and process data in real time across various clusters of computer using different simple programming construct. It is 10x time faster on disk and 100x time faster in memory. It provides different high level APIs in Java, Scala and Python. It is integration with Hadoop and its ecosystem, and it can read data from existing system. Developers and data scientists incorporate Spark into their application to rapidly query, analyze, and transform data as a large scale. So now let's discuss about major differences between Spark versus Hadoop. Why we are moving to Spark and we are, why we are leaving Hadoop? The first factor is the speed. If you see in Hadoop, the Hadoop basically faster than traditional system only. But in case of Spark, that is 100x time faster than MapReduce. And on language perspective, Hadoop uses Java, which is very lengthy and complex as a user perspective. But Spark uses Scala, which is very user friendly. That's why it is much more visible compared to Hadoop. Now coming to data processing. Hadoop only process batch data, but in case of Spark, it process batch, real-time, iterative, interactive, graph, and many more. That's why every type of data processing operation is happened in Spark, and that's why it is much more feasible option compared to Hadoop. Now, in case of ease of use, Hadoop is complex and lengthy. As I have mentioned, it is used Java, and which is not that much of user friendly compared to Spark. But Spark has compact and easier than Hadoop. Now, another most important difference between Hadoop and Spark is caching. Hadoop doesn't support caching of the data, but Spark, it caches the data in memory and enhances the system performance. So those are the basic and major differences between Spark versus Hadoop. Now coming to the different features of Spark. I have mentioned Spark has different features like speed, dynamic in nature, in-memory computation, reusability, fault tolerant in Spark, jail time, stream processing, and lazy evaluation. I'll be discussing every features in detail right now. First coming to speed. Using Apache Spark, we achieve a high data processing speed of about 100x time faster in memory and 10x time faster on disk. This is made possible by reducing the number of read write to disk. Now second is dynamic in nature. We can easily develop a parallel application as Spark provides 80 high level operators. Now the most important features in Spark is in-memory computation in Spark. With in-memory processing, we can increase the processing speed. Here the data is being cached. So we need not fetch the data from disk every time. Thus the time is saved. Spark has DAG execution engine, which facilitates in-memory computation and acyclic data flow resulting in high speed. Now coming to reusability. We can reuse the Spark code for batch processing, joint stream against historical data or run ad hoc queries on stream state. Now coming to another important feature of Spark is fault tolerant in Spark. Apache Spark provide fault tolerance 
through spark abstraction rdd spark rdds are designed to handle the failure of any worker node in the cluster thus it ensures that the loss of data reduces to zero i'll be discussing about spark rdd in detail in later slide now coming to real time stream processing spark has a provision for real time stream processing earlier the problem with hadoop map reduce was it can handle and process the data which is already present but it is not able to handle real time data so when spark came into existence it can easily solve this problem and it can easily process real time data now coming to the last feature that is lazy evaluation of spark all the transformation we made in spark rdd are lazy in nature that is it does not give the result right away rather than new rdd is formed from the existing one thus it takes some time to start the action phase so thus this increases the efficiency of the system so those are the important features of spark so now let's discuss about spark components the main spark components are spark core spark sql mlib graphics and streaming from this picture perspective i have created this view in such a way so that you can get the entire clear architecture of spark so from that picture if you see the engine is spark core which is one of the most important component of spark now on language and perspective this is used by scala r java and python and on libraries perspective spark sql mllib graphics and streaming are categorized and the cluster management are handled by hadoop yarn apache mesos spark scheduler and the spark storage components are hdfs standalone node cloud rdbms and nosql so i'll be discussing each and every spark component in detail in later slide now let's start with spark core which is one of the major components of spark all the functionalities being provided by apache spark are built on highest of the spark core it delivers speed by providing in memory computation capability spark core is the foundation of parallel and distributed processing of giant data set it is a main backbone of essential input output functionalities and significant in programming and observing the role of spark cluster it holds all the components related to scheduling distributing and monitoring job on cluster task dispatching fault recovery the functionalities of this components are it contains basic functionality of spark mainly the task scheduling memory management fault recovery interacting with storage system and the second functionality of the spark core is home to api that defines rdd if you see from this picture perspective rdd has different features mainly rdd has two phases that is transformation and action so i'll be discussing every detail of rdd in later slide but before that i'll be giving some overview of rdd if you see from this picture the rdd has transformation phase which uh, creates new rdd and this new rdd again creates another rdd so in such a way the sequence of rdd is created for computation of data now coming to the action phase which is happen after transformation so after completion of transformation phase action phase starts it basically does different type of calculation to give the final output at the end system so this is the overview of as part core and this rdd concept is one of the major part of this part core so let's discuss about rdd transformation by taking one example from this image i have given one rdd steps by which you will understand how exactly rdd transformation happens so first step is in the first block if you see the first rdd is defined for uh, reading a text file 
so that's why this dot text file is a function which is used to read a text file the text file name is test.txt so this is the first step of this rdd for which this first rdd is created now the second step is this R new rdd2 is created from that rdd and in the second step this text file is splitted by which space if you see that dot split and within that bracket if you see there are two double quote is there it means that this uh, text file is post splitted like this way now in the third step it is mapped so the entire map operation this is one of the function which is used for uh, transformation of this rdd so here mainly this rdd is used for map function now coming to the fourth step here one of the calculation is used uh, that is one filter function is used filter is one of the inbuilt function in scala so in filter function is used and what it filter function does uh, it will be calculating the uh, result in such a way that it starts with a so in the text file it uh, does the calculation in such a way that uh, it contains and starts with a only now coming to uh, next phase that is fifth phase after uh, filtering of that rtd it does the reduce by key operation so by use this reduce by key operation it accumulate the data and then it is going for the next step so the, the next step is rdd6 which is the new rdd there after reduce by key it is used short by key now short by key is used by using if you see here a minus 2 and a minus 1 it means that is a key value pair so by using key value pair this uh, data is shorted and then it is going to the action phase so this is the entire phases of this transformation which of the one example so in conclusion i can say that basically in this operation the, one of the text file is read first and then it does different operation means it does a calculation by which it will be giving the output which is having starts with a and then it is collecting the data and then it is going to the action phase so this is a one of the example of rdd transformation now in the next slide i'll be showing you the action phase so in action phase mainly it uses different functions to provide the output to the end system so here i have given some functions which are used as a rdd action so from the first block if you see this dot count operation dot count is one of the function which is used in rdd action because count is the collection of the data so after uh, reading or all the transformation phase it is collecting the count like it is collecting the number so this happens in the action phase so that's why we consider count is one of the rdd action not the transformation phase and then going to the collect which i have given in bold letter so there are four example i have given those are the example of action phase so those are used to provide the output at the end system similarly collect top and reduce those are the end system function which are used to provide the output so mainly what transformation does transformation mainly does different calculations and operation and then it is going to the action phase in action phase it does different calculations and it gives the output to the final end system so those are the different steps of rdd now coming to apache spark sql before discussing about the coding technique let me tell you about the details what exactly spark sql is this is one of the most used spark modules which is used for processing structured columnar data format once you have a data frame created you can interact it with the data by using sql syntax this is one of the most advantage in spark sql in other words spark sql brings you native raw sql queries on spark meaning you can run traditional ansi sqls on spark data frame 
So in order to use SQL, first we need to create a temporary table on data frame using create triplets temp view concept. And then once you create it, this table can be accessed throughout the Spark session and it will be dropped along with your Spark context termination. So let me uh, tell you the coding which I have done here. First thing is for, uh, there is one uh, CSP file is present in any of the path. So first what you have to do, you have to read that CSP file by using spark.read.csp. After that, uh, you can do different type of SQL queries by using these steps. So before going to SQL queries, what you have to do, you have to create a replace temp view function on that basis of the CSP file. So if you see here, I have created one data frame. So this DF is nothing but spark.read.csp and then it is pointing that person underscore data CSP file. So on basis of person dot underscore data dot csv file, this person underscore data uh, temp view has been created and then you can perform any type of SQL queries. For example, here I have created a new data frame df2 where spark dot sql equal to select star from person data. It means that this person underscore data dot csv file become a table and this table is accessed by any of the SQL queries. So you can uh, check print schema, you can check the data which is present in that person underscore data and you can do different type of operation. Here I have just shown this group by operation by using a new RDD. So by using this one you can uh, get that group by gender and whatever you want. So like this way, it is much more feasible way to use Spark SQL in Spark data. Now let's discuss about Spark Streaming. Spark Streaming is an extension of the core Spark API that enables scalable, high throughput, fault tolerant stream processing of live data streams. Data can be ingested from many sources like Kafka, Kinesis or TCP sockets that I have shown in this picture and it can be processed using complex algorithm expressed with high level functions like map, reduce, join and windows and different many more. Finally, this processed data can be pushed out to file system, database and different live dashboards. So the main functionality of this module is it enables of live streaming of data like log files generated by production web services. The APIs defined in these modules are quite similar to the Spark Core RDD APIs. So those are the main functionality of Spark Streaming. Now let's move to Spark Machine Learning Library. It is Apache Spark Scalable Machine Learning Library that discusses both high quality algorithm and high speed. The machine learning algorithms like regression, classification, clustering, pattern mining and collaborating filtering. It is usable in Java, Scala, Python and R. It is high quality algorithms and it is 100x time faster than MapReduce. Basically, Spark ML is the primary machine learning API for Spark. The library Spark.ml offers a high level APIs built on top of data frames for constructing ML pipelines. So this is the overview of Spark ML library. Now let's move to graphics. This is one of the API for graphs and graph parallel execution. There is a network analytics in which we store the data, clustering, classification, transversal, searching and pathfinding is also possible in graph. It generally optimizes how we can represent vertex and edge in a graph. Graphics also optimizes how we can represent vertex and edge when they are primitive data types. To support graph computation, it supports fundamental operations like subgraph, join vertex and aggregate messages as well as an optimized variance of the Peregil APIs. So here I have mentioned some few points also on graphics. So those are, this is Apache Sparks APIs for graphs and graph parallel computation. It is seamlessly work with both graph and collections. It is comparable performance to the first specialized graph processing system. 
Now we can choose it from growing library of graph algorithm. So now let's discuss about Spark architecture. From this pictorial point of view, there are three components are there. Those are driver program, cluster manager and worker node. I'll be explaining every individual component in detail right now. So first come to driver program. The master node has a driver program that is responsible for Spark application. In Spark, our code is the driver program while in an interactive cell, then the cell acts as a driver. Within the master node, we should create a Spark context which can act as a gateway to other Spark functionalities. So mainly the main function of Spark computation method runs on Spark driver. The driver is responsible for creating user codes to create RDDs and Spark contest. When the user launches a Spark cell, the Spark driver is created. A Spark application is complete when the driver is terminated. A Spark driver splits the Spark application tasks that are scheduled to be run on the executor. The driver has two primary functions to convert a user program into the task and to schedule a task on the executor. Now coming to cluster manager. The Spark contest works with cluster manager. It helps to manage various jobs. So Spark contest and cluster work together to execute a job. Every job is divided into various parts that are distributed over the worker node. Worker nodes are slaves whose task is to execute a task. These tasks are then sent to the partition's RTDs to be executed and the results are returned to the Spark contest. When the user increases the number of workers, the job can be divided into more partitions to make the execution faster. So basically, cluster manager are used to launching executor and even drivers. Jobs and actions are scheduled on the cluster manager using Spark scheduler like FIFO. So it is a plug label component of Spark and its application can be dynamically adjusted depending on the workload. This enables the application to use free resources which can be requested again when there is a demand. So this feature is available on all cluster managers. So some examples of cluster managers are Yarn, Mesos and Standalone. Now coming to executor. The individual task in a Spark job run on the Spark executor. An executor is launched only once at the start of the application and it keeps running throughout the life of the application. Executor do not hinder the working of the Spark application and even if an executor fails, the executor is to run the task that makes up the application and returns the result to the driver. It also provides the storage in its memory for RDDs and cached by user. So these are the overview of Spark architecture and its every individual components. Now let's move to the topic of Spark application. Spark is a widely used technology adopted by most industries. Let's look at some of the prominent Apache Spark application. There are different applications are there like event detection, interactive analysis, for computing, machine learning. So first I'll be discussing about machine learning, what exactly the Spark application is in machine learning. Apache Spark is equipped with a scalable machine learning library called MLLIB that can perform advanced analytics such as clustering, classification, dimensionally reduction, etc. Some of the prominent analytics jobs like predictive analysis, customer segmentation, sentiment analysis, etc. make Spark an intelligent technology. Now coming to fog computing. With the influx of big data concept, lot has required a prominent space for the innovation of more advanced technology. Based on the theory of connecting digital devices with the help of small sensors, this technology deals with a human's amount of data emerging from numerous sources. Spark requires parallel processing, which is certainly not possible in cloud computing. Therefore, for computing, which decentralizes the data and storage 
use Spark Streaming as a solution to this problem. Now coming to event detection. The feature of the Spark Streaming allows organization to keep track of rare and unusual behaviors of protecting the systems. Institutions such as financial and security and health organizations also use triggers to detect potential risk. Now the last point that is interactive analysis. Among the most notable features of Apache Spark is its ability to support interactive analysis. Unlike MapReduce which supports batch processing, Apache Spark processes data faster because of which it can process exploratory queries without sampling. Now let's discuss about performance optimization technique using Spark. There are different techniques are there which are serialization, API selection, advanced variable, cache and persist, by key operation, file format selection, garbage collection tuning and level of parallelism. Let's first discuss about serialization. Serialization plays an important role in the performance of any distributed application. By default, Spark uses Java Serializer. Spark can also use another serializer called Creo Serializer for better performance. Creo Serializer is in compact binary format and offers processing 10x time faster than Java Serializer. Now coming to API selection. Spark introduced three types of API to work upon. Those are RDD, data frame and data set. So I'll be discussing every individual performance components in detail in next slide now. So first coming to RDD. So RDD is a used for low level operation with less optimization. So from this picture you can see the RDD is defined like this way. So val rtd1, so rtd1 is a new rtd which is used for reading one text file and by using that it is able to read the text file and then it would like to collect all the data which is present on the text file. So how we can do this by doing rtd1.collect operation we can get the list of data which are present on that text file. So this is the format and this is the way by which RDD is taken place. Now coming to data frame. Data frame is the best choice in most cases due to the catalyst optimizer and low garbage collection over it. This mainly is visible by table format. So if you see here, uh, first I have defined a data frame val df where it is defined as a JSON file. So mainly this one of the JSON file is called and it is read. So after reading that JSON file, uh, it does one filter operation like df.filter so that whatever the uh, filter operation is age greater than 21. So whatever the uh, people having the age 21, it will be selected. Now coming to dot show. So by doing dot show, it is uh, able to give that output. So this format which you are able to see, this is the call data frame. So data frame is such a thing by which we can see the data in table format. So that's why this is one of the most visible and most advantageable things in Spark. Now coming to data set. A data set is a strongly typed collection of domain specific object that can be transformed in parallel using functional or relational operation. Each data set has also an untied view called a data frame which is a data set of row. So operations available on data set are divided into transformation and action. Transformations are the ones that produce new data set and actions are the ones that trigger computation and return results. Examples of transformation include map, filter, select and aggregate. Examples of action also count, slow, show, writing, data, output, file format. So mainly 
data set can be created through different transformation available on existing data set so in this example you can say this is one of the data set we have defined that is val ds and in this val ds we have uh, used read function like there is a one json file which is used for reading that file and after reading that file it is showing like that ds dot show so this show also one of the data set function which is used to show the data which is visible which is present also in this json file so this is the format by which we can define the data set and we can visualize the data now coming to another spark optimization technique that is definition of advanced variable spark comes with two type of advanced variable those are broadcast and accumulator variable broadcasting plays an important role while tuning your spark job and broadcast variable will make your small data set available on each node and that node and data will be treated locally for the process suppose you have a situation where one data set is very small and another data set is quite large so what you have to do and you if you want to perform the joint operation between these two in that case we should go for the broadcast joint so that the small data set can fit into your broadcast variable the syntax to use broadcast variable is i have defined that in this below slide so by this way you can define that broadcast variable so here we have a second data frame that is very small and we're keeping this data frame as a broadcast variable so from this picture you can able to see how we can define that broadcast variable and another is accumulator the accumulator variable is defined like this way by using uh, val accum accum is one of the uh, variable we have defined so sc dot long accumulator in bracket we have defined one of the variable so like this way we can uh, define accumulator and as well as broadcast variable now let's move to rest of the spark optimization techniques those are cache and persist by key operation file format selection garbage collection tuning and level of parallelism so let's discuss about cache and persist first spark provides its own caching mechanism like persist and cache cache and persist will store the data set in memory when you have a small data set which needs to be used multiple times in your program we cache the data set so cache means it always in memory and persist means it always memory and disk spark provides its own caching mechanism like persist and caching so persist and caching mechanism will store the data set into the memory whenever there is requirement so where you have a small data set and that data set is being used in multiple times in your program so if you apply rdd cache it will always store the data in memory and if we apply rdd dot persist then some part of data can be stored into memory and some can be stored on disk that is the difference between cache and persist now coming to by key operation shuffles are heavy operation which consumes a lot of memory so while coding in spark the user always should try to avoid shuffle operation because high shuffling may give rise to the out of memory error to avoid such an error the user can increase the level of parallelism user use reduce by key instead of group by key this is one of the optimization technique used in spark and also partition the data correctly so that the data can be processed in feasible way so as we know during the transformation of spark we have many by key operations so by key operation generate lot of shuffle shuffles are heavy operation because they may consume a lot of memory now coming to file format selection which is one of the most optimization technique in spark so spark supports many formats such as csp json xml parquet orc avro etc so spark job can be optimized by choosing the parquet file with snappy compression which gives a high performance and best analysis parquet file is native to spark 
which carries the metadata along with its footer. So Spark comes with many file formats like CSP, JSON, XML, Parquet, ORC, Avro, and many more. Now coming to the another optimization technique that is garbage collection tuning. JVM garbage collection can be a problem when you have a large collection of unused object. So the first step in garbage collection tuning is to collect statistics by choosing verbose while submitting Spark job. This needs to be remembered. So in an ideal situation, we can try to keep garbage collection overheads less than 10% of heap memory. As we know, underneath our Spark job is running on the JVM platform. So JVM garbage collection can be a problematic when you have a large collection of an unused object. So the first step is tuning of garbage collection is to collect statistics by choosing the option in your Spark submit verbose. So in general, in an ideal situation, we should keep our garbage collection memory less than 10% of heap memory. That is the main conclusion part. Now coming to the last optimization technique that is level of parallelism. Parallelism plays a very important role while tuning Spark job. Every partition task requires a single core for processing. There are two ways to maintain the parallelism. Those are repartition and coalesce. So repartition gives an equal number of partition with high shuffling and coalesce generally reduces the number of partition with less shuffling. In any distributed environment, parallelism plays very important role while tuning your Spark job. So whenever a Spark job is submitted, it creates the disk that will contain stages and the task depend upon partition. So very part, every partition or task requires a single core of the system for processing. There are two ways to maintain the parallelism, repartition and coalesce. So whenever you apply the repartition method, it gives you equal number of partition, but it will shuffle a lot. So it is not advisable to go for partition when you want to lash all the data. So coalesce will generally reduce the number of partition and it creates the less shuffling of the data. So that's why coalesce is much more feasible option compared to repartition. So those are the optimization technique of Spark that we have discussed right now. So guys, this brings to the end of the session on basic level of Apache Spark. If it is helpful to you, please do subscribe my channel for getting more informative content on big data coding and interview questions. Thank you.